Sequences are stored in different formats in databases uh, and since different softwares they require uh, those sequences to be in specific formats, so it's good to have an idea about what the major formats are and we will go on a few of them. Uh, FASTA is the most uh, recognized and well distributed format. So normally uh, in FASTA the sequences uh, they are put in, uh, there is a greater than sign and then down below and there is the actual sequence, so the length of the sequence should be less than uh, 80 characters. Generally, we have it's around 60 characters. So here is the FASTA format coming out from uh, DNA at the top. We see it's starting with this greater than sign right here. Same way down below is the protein. Um, and then we have GI. GI stands for gene identification. Obviously, this is the ID of this gene and then there is something written as C. So C is uh, it's coming from actually the complementary strands and the regions from which it's coming are designated here, uh, the base positions uh, in between them this gene is located. So, and then there is a short description that it's coming from Homo sapiens uh, man chromosome 17. This is the assembly, primary assembly. So, assembly is where we can get uh, short sequence reads or small sequences and we put them together into a gene. So, that thing is called as assembly. So, it's the primary assembly. So, then here is the actual sequence that starts. So, it's around 60 base pairs in each line. And since this sequence was very big, so I put those dash in the end. We can also see a protein sequence over here down below. Same way we have the ID and it's a reference sequence. So, reference sequences are the ones which are the curated sequences. There is a, a subsection in NCBI called as REF6, so that actually puts those references kind of standard sequences in order to avoid redundancies. So, we can say these are the primary or the main sequences. We might have other alternative slice variants, uh, but references are kind of true representative of the class. Then we have this ID, again right here the protein ID. Then we have its description, its cellular tumor antigen protein. P53 isoform and then we put its sequence. So, I excluded some part of it. So, those dashes are there. So, sometimes uh, if FASTA files they end up with this star signs, sometimes they don't. So, it's important that the software must know that what star means here. So, GeneBank is uh, the, the format which is there in the GeneBank database. So, that's a kind of a standard format. Um, the other formats are pretty similar to it. In GeneBank, the records, they start with word locus and then we have some description lines. Uh, the sequences, they start with the word origin as we have seen previous uh, in previous sections and um, sequences, they end up with those double slash signs. So, here is the GeneBank format. So, we start with locus and then we have its ID, uh, its 237 base pairs. There are, there are some short descriptions, its DNA, its primary sequence submitted on this date. Then we have a definition line uh, where we can have some descriptions, some explanations about this gene. Again, we have accession number and then it provides the base counts also. How many A's in it, how many C's in it, there are uh, how many G's in it and how many T's in it. And then the word origin tells us that the actual sequence is coming. So, actually we have these lines in which we have 60 bases. Uh, they are split into chunks of 10. So, that is a kind of a standard practice and sequences end with those slashes. Now, AMBEL format is similar to GeneBank format. Uh, we have ID, we have accession, we have descriptions represented as DE and then the sequence actually starts from where the word SQ is there and then we have pretty similar line as we have seen in the previous example and then the sequence ends with double slashes just like GeneBank. Uh, Swiss plot is uh, similar to AMBEL except there are some more descriptions, there are some more letters, so we have plenty of them, you can go and to look into it. For example, we have RP reference position, RN reference number, RP reference position, and then we have authors who have submitted, and same way the sequences, they start with SQ, and the termination line is this represented as this double slash. So far, what we have seen is those sequences are submitted in kind of similar formats. Um, XML is a modern practice in which we try to put those sequences in kind of a machine language. So, XML stands for uh, extensible markup language. So, uh, the format is similar to HTT, HTML, which is the 
uh, language for web programming. Um, the, the good part is that this language is in between uh, machine and man readable, so it's kind of easy to code over this. So that is, seems like pretty weird, but not weird for the people with a computer science background, so it's kind of this format. NBRF, uh, let me go over it also. It gives uh, these, in addition to the sequences, which are format is pretty similar to simple FASTA, but in addition to that, it gives us the checksum value. So checksum is, we take uh, those nucleotides, and since we know in computers, uh, every digit is related with some ASCII value, so we can take those values and add them up together, and then we can come up with this number called checksum. So that is good to uh, put there. And once somebody is downloading the sequence, he can again check on his computer and find the checksum if they are, a, they, are, they are equivalent to one another. If they are equal to one another, means the sequence is uh, correctly downloaded. Otherwise, there must be some issues with the downloading. GCG stands for Genetics Computer Group. So basically, it's a group of scientists who are helping the biological community to develop the softwares and training programs to help with the biological sequence analysis problems. So this uh, also came up with those formats, sequence formats, which are kind of similar to the previous one, NBRF. We have checksums. Uh, we don't have greater than sign, just like FASTA. They also tell about the length of this sequence, and then there can be multiple sequences in one file. Uh, sometimes we need to convert between different sequences, so you can come up with your own scripts or, or you can come up with your own codes, uh, but there are some other programs which are available. So one of them is ReadSeq. So that was developed by D.G. Gilbert at Indiana University. And uh, basically, it recognizes DNA or protein sequence files, and then it interconverts between different formats. So what we uh, can conclude from this section is that databases, they store sequences in different formats. And since uh, we need to play between different formats, uh, we might uh, write our own codes, or we might take help from the already um, available programs like ReadSeq.